Now the summer days. Okay, well let's do this intro again. It's a can opener. <laughs> With Nathan. He sounded nervous there. <laughs> I was just yeah, not sure get, if we're going to do yeah. this joke again or not. Yeah, I, if you, you went with it, though. I would have, but it's John Laxon. Evan Third time. Stolman. Nathan Scarred for life. Third time's a charm. Yes, John Laxon of... <laughs> that's a good one. Usually I have to make that joke. No, that's... Laxon of that's, uh, that's been going for, like, 50 years, no, I, I think. invented it, trust me. It's been gone for like 50 years. Started with my dad. John, I went back in time and called your dad that. Oh, shit. <coughs> Have you guys ever eaten laxatives? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> there's this one that. time. No, there's one time back, mm. back in high school. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I was really drunk, okay? We were at my buddy's house. <laughs> you thought it was some Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> no, even worse, okay? So I was really hammered, and my friends were, like, all laughing in the corner. Huh? Like, yo, come s- try some German chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> I took a bite. I was like, damn, this shit's good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some more of that. <laughs> I ended up eating the entire. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the entire bar of X Lax. <laughs> I, was, I was freaking out. I was like, "What the fuck?" I thought it was just gonna come out of my ass. While I, was <laughs> I thought it was just gonna explode. <laughs> I was freaking out. All my friends were like, "You what the fuck? You guys just ruined my night." <laughs> Uh, it was so bad. <laughs> what was, a way to sober you up. No, it was terrible. I, mean, <laughs> I can't believe you. But it didn't end up like that. I just had a really good shit the next day. Oh, shit. So it didn't work? It didn't instantly come out like I thought. Like I thought I was going to wake yeah. up in a pool of diarrhea. <laughs> 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 just sleep on the toilet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just strapped just tape to my hole. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> make sure it didn't come out. I was, probably, I was really hammered, too, so that probably added to it. No, that's how you start <laughs> off a podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Bobby will laugh at that. Oh. Not, not badmouth Bobby, but the other Bobby. The Bobby that looks like Nathan, but is even hairier. Whoa. What are we talking about? <laughs> Bro, this guy was... We called him Ape Man. And he got really pissed off. Like, really angry. I embrace my hair, bro. Good, you shouldn't. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> you go wax it. What do you, do you think? I'm not crazy. <laughs> bro, I can could not even imagine. I'm so sweaty right now that my headphones are falling off. I'm are you going to leave them off? I'm going to have to do that for a little bit. Okay. You do that. You do, yeah. It is really sweaty in here. It is. It's even more sweaty than last time. What the or two Jeep. Or too cheap to uh, buy an AC. Luckily, my house came with it. God bless. Oh. Hey, you fucked up. I did. I fucked up. All right. Let's get serious. What do you want to talk about, John? What was the conversation you had with your uh, friend today? That one's a more personal conversation. <laughs> I'm. You need to ease into it, eh? No, not like... That's a conversation between the two. What'd you learn from it? People can be fucked up. It's a good lesson. <laughs> Don't hang out with fucked up people. I know. What are we doing here then? Fuck. Yeah, Nathan's fucked up. Yeah. So bad. Are you guys nervous to the end of school? No, I'm fucking excited. Are you? Oh man, I can't wait to leave. Yeah? Go back to Toronto? Oh yeah. Are you guys leaving right I'm going come to September? London. I think the I think the twenty fifth of August I'm going back to Toronto for like a day and then to London for a month and then back to Toronto. When's the semester over? Eighteenth, I think. Around True. that. Oh, it's even sooner than I thought it was. Fuck me, eh? See Three weeks? 
Okay. Yeah, almost. Yeah. See, I'm not. I'm not nervous, but I'm still debating whether I'm going back to school. I definitely don't think I am. Okay. Yeah. I. It's like. I feel you. I feel like the only reason why I would be going back to school is purely based off fear that I don't have the necessary enough quote unquote skills <clears throat> to go into the real world and nervous about my future endeavors. But realistically I'm much more confident than I was even like a month ago about that. I mm-hmm. feel you. I've been watching some YouTube videos that have just been pumping me up for what? getting ready. Skateboard. Uh, pretty much. Well, it's this guy who he runs a skateboard company where they make revive skateboards or force wheels. And he just kind of talks about, well, he does like funny shit too, but he talks about how he started his company. Like he didn't come from a business background or anything. He just had a love for skateboarding and all that. And it's not even... Even if I don't get into the skateboarding business, even just music business, my other interests, it still has pumped me up for that. Just because it's like, like... what do you mean pumped you up for that? Like entrepreneurial-wise? Like yeah. you wanting to be a Ent- business owner? Yes. True, true, true. So what, what do you, do you want to be a business owner? Is that the goal? Yes. Like well, what kind of business? Uh, it's kind of... I'm going to have to figure it it out exactly but i'm kind of between kind of like a studio slash label-ish type thing or i'm sort of looking at getting into like a skateboarding company like making boards and stuff like a brand you want to create yeah, a brand yeah that's interesting same i don't know i was when i was having that conversation with bobby we got into uh go check out the can opener interviews first one that mouth bobby and he was talking about how <laughs> dreams manifest in ways that you don't expect you know what i mean like i came into this program last year come september and to music industry arts with such a different mindset than i have right now oh yeah i feel you, you know what i mean those dreams that i had before weren't fake but they ended up manifesting into into something else that i believe in right now that i want to pursue right now podcast 100 <laughs> percent. just communication i've always wanted to have a voice right uh-huh. i've always wanted to communicate and i needed to find the the vein yeah exactly and the right avenue because i clearly can't do it with music i i mean i don't think i can't i can't express myself you can do anything you're right <laughs> but there but you got to be real well, with yourself your too. passion what you and i want to be great like what you were saying you, you know you were saying the other day in class you're like if you want to get to a certain level in something you got to focus right and i want to be great i don't just want to be fucking good so it's like i really got to be real with myself and find the avenue that i feel like i can achieve what i want to achieve and music is definitely not that. As much as I like put that on my personality and like made that my persona for so long, it's like it just didn't. So where do you think <clears throat> it's good to draw the line between being real with yourself and following your dreams? Um I, I feel like we all know. You know what I mean? Are you sure? <laughs> or do you think we all know, but we don't all admit it? No, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's hard to come face to face with personally what like I've, I've dr- like I've thought of and like the person I wanted to be. Uh huh. And it's like, you just got to be you. You can't be the person you want to be. You got to be you. And you got to be the f- best you can be. And there's, you can't really change that. No matter what. But it, I believe you'll know. I totally believe you'll know. It's hard to... It's just like, let's say you were working at a job for 20 years. 
it's hard to quit that job and go start something else. Uh-huh. Like, that's difficult. That's a difficult time in your life. But it's like you have these dreams that you've created in your head. I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely manifested and had introspective thoughts about what I wanted to be in the future. Yeah. And that shit's totally, like, in the trash right now. It's totally manifested itself into something else. That's hard uh-huh. to come across because, it's like, I thought I knew myself, but I really didn't to the fullest that I know right now. I'm still figuring it out. But it's not quite at that level as it was. Yeah. Is it knowing yourself more or just being more real with what you are or who you are? Because don't you think that those aspirations are still like they're still you, right? You know what I mean? The can opener. Hey. (laughs) Um, They are still me. But they did manifest into something that I didn't expect. Uh huh. And it's like I, you gotta have courage to say, okay, this is like I spent a lot of money at fucking music school this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like those people who go do their four year uh, university degrees and they're like shit. Like I don't want to be a fucking whatever My an brother. engineer. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did college, but but four it's years like yeah, he you, was completely switched. Yeah, and then you go back and you're like, I really just don't. That takes a lot of courage to say to yourself, and you realize that like, you can't do that either. Like you can't, you can't live a life that's not yours. Uh huh. Well, it's going to blow up in your face. No, exactly. You you're not gonna. You're not gonna live a very happy life. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no. Right now, I'm kind of deciding between well not deciding between two passions i'm still passionate about both it's just which one i want to focus more on do you feel like you've wasted money on going to school for music industry arts now that it's switched well it's not that it's switched i i'm deciding if i want to stay into music not that i've i've always wanted to be in music or if i want to focus more on like the whole skateboard company whatnot it's just finding out which one i feel more passionate about doing but have you how long have you liked like skateboarding and that whole thing since like grade five four so these are two lifelong interests yes, these for are you. two lifelong interests it's just one is resurging now yeah it's like it never fully went away, I think, skateboarding for me. I skateboarded for a while when I was younger, Yeah. then went to longboarding, and now I'm kind of going back into skateboarding. And I've always had an interest in just the whole culture and everything. It's just been a more resurgent of, I want to, you know, start skateboarding again. I'm kind of a lot more aware of the whole industry and everything. It's just been resurged, I guess. So, and it's like life comes in waves, right? Yeah. But do you guys do you guys think about living with purpose? What do you mean by that? Like, see, I equate happiness and fulfillment in life. I think that's the ultimate. That's the ultimate achievement is fulfillment. Yeah. And living with purpose. And that's what I try to focus on. And it's like I don't, I, I don't feel purposeful. I don't like the process of making music as much as I love the product. Uh huh. You know what I mean? And I, I know I couldn't personally sit behind a desk and do that because I couldn't affect people the way I want to. Okay. Okay. So you guys think about that? Yeah. With your own life? Yeah. In what way? Explain, extrapolate the idea. I'm not sure if I'm picking up exactly what you mean with purpose, but I'll try and explain. Well, it what's your, what's your, yeah? What's your perspective of purposeful life? I think a purposeful life is where you can make the most impact in other people's lives. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we're thinking the same thing. Yeah, and I yeah, I think my my purposeful life would be making music. Yeah. It's the only thing I've really been good at and really loved. See, and that's the thing. It's like that's your outlet. That's your outlet, right? Mm -hmm. And I was blinded because I feel like I thought I thought I I, 
the image in my mind was different than the actual reality. It was not my outlet. I wanted it to be my outlet because it was cool and it was like I felt so many when I listen to music, when I listen to J. Cole or when I listen to Kid Cudi, it's like, holy shit, these motherfuckers are talking to so many people. But it's like, that's not me. Well, you you did, like, connect to the talking to so many people part, right? Yeah. It was just not what you thought it was. Yeah, it was just, the, it was the different outlet. Uh-huh. Yeah, for me, it's like I'm finding out that... May, I'm trying to just do songwriting for fun at this point, but I yeah. don't think it's a place I'm very strong in, and I know I can get better, but I feel better recording people and trying to get their mess, help them get their message out, maybe in, help one. give them an idea of how to get their music out to more people, which I find I really love doing. Yeah, see, I just don't think that's my place. I really don't. And it's like coming to terms with yourself. Yeah. It's a hard thing, man. And I realized that because it was I was trying way too hard. You know what I mean? When you try, let's say, when someone tries, wait, like that fucking kid the other night when we were in our studio session. Okay. Maybe it's not the best example. But it's like when you try so hard to get people to like you, uh-huh. it's not going to work, right? Yeah. When you try so hard to, when I was trying so hard to figure out how to make music my elder, I was so stressed all the time uh-huh. because I was like, man, I can I do this? Can I not do this? It, it was just such a negative force in my life. Uh-huh. And now, and now that's totally different because my mind says change. And because my entire life was resting on that. You know what I mean? My entire everything, my entire future was like, man, is this going to happen? And if I, I feel like if you're questioning if this is going to happen or not, it's not going to happen. Okay. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah. But I guess it's different for everybody. But that's my experience I've gone through in the past year. I definitely don't regret it. Like, I asked you about going into school for this because I've learned so much. Yeah. And I've met great people. Yeah. I think it's hard to regret anything that you do in life. Is it, though? I think so. At because this everything. Age, at this age, maybe, dude. Maybe. I have a few regrets. I can't, well, like, do say you reg- they're done, but... When I'm saying regrets... Ragrets, no ragrets, no ragrets. Uh, not even one letter. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> there are things I wish I did. That I kind of wish I did differently, but at the same time, everything that I've done is every mistake I've made is a learning experience. Well, yeah, like right? regret to me is something that you're like, you know what? My life would be better if I had not done that. Regret is a sad, sad thing. Like I can't even I, imagine I can't think, being in that position. I can't think of things that I legitimately wish I had never done because everything in my life I've learned from. You see, I, I agree with that. And another point is I can't regret anything I've done either because I'm here right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's the thing. It's like I'm here right now, so I have nothing to regret. I think if I don't you want have anything regrets, to you're be different in the past. You think so? Oh, shit. A little bit. Living in Are the you past, living in the past, bro? Are you living in the past, John? Not really that I like it's too late now to really worry about it, but What are some of your regrets? Let's hear. Actually, oh, before just, you say that, my buddy told me a good thing uh, uh, interesting. Luke will be doing a podcast with Soon when he comes back from Muskoka, but he says living in the past is depression, living I've in the future that. is anxiety, anxiety, and living in the present is joy. I see that. Yeah, I do. Uh, very, see that. very true. Yeah. Okay, go on with your regrets. You about oh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's more just like stuff I've said that have like hurt people in the past and stuff that I get. I learn stuff from that. But I think it sucks because it hurt people. You're right. Yeah, that's interesting. So that's the thing I regret. But do you think you can live a life without hurting people? No, but I guess we just have two different opinions on what regret is. Yeah. 
seems like. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a big like the. I'm a big believer in tough love now. Yeah, I really am. It's not good to coddle people. No, it's 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 terrible. It's like when you do that, you're hurting someone. You're hurting someone even more than you would be if you just totally spoke your honest opinion. I agree with that because. I've been in that situation. What, being coddled? Yes. By who? A friend. Like, just that, saying bullshit? Like, yeah, and then, like, a, it was a relationship, and after... Okay, so more than a friend here, yeah. Don. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking liar. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was a relationship I learned a lot from, though. Uh, it was kind of like, slowly, after a while, kind of near the end of when we just fell apart. Yeah. was like hearing all this shit that was the complete opposite of what I was hearing before. So what do you what do you mean? It was just stuff that was like trying to comfort me and then it's like not I didn't like this is just a small example. It's not yeah. like well give us something an example. that was give that us some bad. Context. It was like okay. Like saying like oh I I like this and then afterwards finding out, oh, no, I didn't actually like that. Like, horror movies. I'll go. Okay. Just that's try like a very minor Someone example. else trying to be someone for you. Yeah. yeah. I think that's dangerous. That <laughs> is dangerous. That's bound to fail. That helps no one. No. See, I learned the same thing from a relationship really recently of that exact same thing. Except I was more of the person trying to be someone else rather than them doing that to me. Uh-huh. And I realized that's when I learned that lesson. It's uh-huh. like you can't. It's impossible. Yeah. It's like it's never going to work. It, it, it's that, never going to work the way you want it to. Uh, no, it won't. What do you guys, what is love? This Baby, is don't hurt me. <laughs> I was just about to say that, John. You stole my uh, joke. Yeah, no, you should have sung it, bro. <laughs> what is love? What is love to you, John? Relationship wise, relationship wise. This is, I've heard lots of people say this, so it's kind of not original for me to say this. No, what? Nothing you say is original. Nothing I say is original. Like, love for everyone is obviously different. Is it? I think, like, their definition of love, I feel. Like, to me, love is someone who I can just be completely honest with, you know, like, I'm comfortable around. Yeah. So like it, it See, doesn't even is that need to romantic be romantic love. No, it doesn't need to be romantic okay, so love. Is what I'm trying to say. So general? I have love for friends. But what's the difference between that and romantic love? I think romantic love is that with the added kind of like sexual stuff. But is that on. not a part of that? Isn't that the underlying, and then everything else is on top of it? What? Uh, being you being able to be honest with someone and then being through you through the thick and thin because I think and being like, totally you can transparent have love for friends who it's like you know you absolutely trust them like you're open with them you're honest you can you feel like you can be you around them they better you as they make they help you become a better you Sort of. I think that's what all relationships should do. Well, you, that's what love yeah. is. If you have I a relationship think. where it's not helping, I, I don't even know if that's love. I'm just saying, I'd say that's just communication between two individuals, a relationship between two. I guess it would be love. But, like, I think if you're, if you have any relationships with anyone and it's not bettering you, you need to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> like, there's no, it, there's no point, right? Yeah. Uh, but I agree with the... It's like... It's kind of hard to explain exactly how I feel, because... But what's that like, What's that sexual love, then? Is that different? I think that's just someone... Are we meant to be well, misogynistic? Well, I guess we don't need... Whoa. I'm not misogynistic. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Are we, what's the word when you're with someone, just one person? Monogamous. 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 Are we meant to be monogamous? I think like is that a real it's feeling? It's kind of or is a that hard just topic. A- I think it depends. Like if the people, if everyone in that relationship is happy, do you? Yeah. For me, and do I, each other. Well, yeah. And do each, <laughs> other. <laughs> each other. But for me, I personally like monogamy for myself. Yeah. Like I, I like be polygamy, with, bro. 
Shit, bro. You know what? You Yo, I got seven do wives. You, and those, you do you <laughs> and those seven, seven wives. wives and three husbands. But That's what I'm no, like about. for me, I want, if I am to have a relationship, I want to focus on that person. You know, it's us two, not me and seven girlfriends, three boyfriends, you know. Yeah, I'm with John on that. But that's just, in my personal opinion, if you want to do seven wives and three husbands, <laughs> you do it. But is that, As long as everyone in that relationship wants to do that. Is that purely a societal I think it skeleton? has to do with society itself, just the... I don't know, man. Morality of society in North America. Polygamy has been around for a long time. Yeah, but polygamy is a culture. Uh, that's polygamy is not natural. You know what I'm saying? Really I'm not saying you should have seven wives, but are, is it really natural to fuck the same person for the rest of your life? It depends. You it depends. Go and, what do you mean by natural? It, like it, without society, without this con- construct we have around us, are we really? Is that? I don't like know a, if that's even possible to a- answer. Because I we've think all that's lived. all just kind of... Well, yeah, it's kind of hard to answer because we've lived... Yeah, We have not lived we without have. a society. But I think it's more just... If that's your style, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Polygamy is your style. Go <laughs> for it, dog. That's the best I can say. Like, I don't... Yeah. I know lots of people who will hook up with guys, yeah. girls... That's something I don't like to do myself. Yeah, you do, John. You're covering no, up, though. No, so I, 100% I cover up. am not, actually. <laughs> it's I'm going to spit out my drink. Fuck. <laughs> I, I'm not even trying to cover up at all. Yeah. You cover up on the boys' part. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel you. I'm not a fan of just having sex randomly like i don't give a shit right maybe i will in the future when i'm fucking when i maybe maybe Billy it'll Nair. change that's <laughs> what i'm saying but i i i like to have a connection right like i yeah. i want to be able to please a person so do you think there's a difference between sex and making love yes shall we say i do you do i do too i don't know if i've ever been in that position to say mm-hmm it's just to be more fairly opinion, honest with you, because like it's the same with. Have you have you ever loved someone? Like, yeah. do you think you've ever loved yeah. someone? Like fully, one hundred percent, love someone. Yes. You, you were totally honest with them, and they were totally honest with you, and there's nothing between it. Well, I think I was totally honest with them. <clears throat> I don't know about the how other can way. you love a liar. I didn't know they were at the time. I know, but doesn't that change your love then? But what if you can see something in the person that maybe they aren't right at that moment, but they could be? But that's not them. If that's not not their current action, if that's not their current actions, you can say that this is a person they could be, but that's just your perception of them. That's That's not actually who they are. That's true. And this is multiple times where one time. Well, I guess now I should say, opening up. No, but now, <laughs> yeah. no, like now. Let's get the can open, <laughs> motherfucker. You I think it. we, it's yeah, be nice. empty. Oh, no, I no, think, no, 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 no. me and this person Whoa, are Sweat all over me, baby. open. Don't actually. <laughs> like, whenever we talk, we're not trying to comfort each other because there have been times where it's like, yeah, you kind of messed up there. Not. Yeah. And stuff, so I think I have. Maybe I haven't. But yeah. It's See, that's that's where I'm at. I don't think I have because I haven't. I've never been in a relationship or with a person of the opposite sex that I love having sex with at the same time as totally being myself, totally being real. But that's just because I don't think I've been totally real with myself. Oh, shit. You're so right, Nathan. God Nathan's bless you. Yeah, no, you got <laughs> it. Like, hey. We're still at sixty-five percent, but still, fuck. But yeah, no, I don't know. That's just I think I have. Well, yeah. I am, but you are. I am. Wait. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where no. did we just go right here? <laughs> no, no. With who, John? Call no one. You would know. 
Call her out right now. She's listening. I'm okay. <laughs> Baby, come back. <laughs> uh, Ooh, you can play love on me. Good song. No, what is love? Swiffer commercial, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what, what that Swiffer is. I think it was. Was Swiffer it? That is exactly what that yeah. is. Swiffer picks some good music. I Shout know. out to Swiffer. You fucking. Yeah, it's just all about good branding. Okay, so you are. Think I am, I guess. I'll just Still, say, I'll eh? say think because so, but why? maybe I'm not. But why? Because I can be completely open, comfortable with that person. I can tell them pretty much anything they know most stuff about me. Where I can't really do that with others. Why? Is like, this the girl who said she was trying to please you? No. No. This is a different one. Yes. This is the what? one that got away. The best stories are always <laughs> about the one that got away. John. What makes someone, for you, be able to open up completely then? I honestly can't tell you that. I don't know. It's just just happens for me. It's just like I feel comfortable with them. <laughs> is that because? I feel no judgment from them. Yeah. Even if it's maybe bad stuff I did in life. They won't judge me. They will know that, okay, what I did was maybe bad, but... There's a firm understanding. Yes, yes. Understanding, episode cool. three. Bro, it all comes back to that Man. shit, baby. That's the Yo, of when life, it's the dog. three of us, it's called understanding. Yeah, you're right. You're <laughs> so right. See, I just... So, like, for me, who and who I can't open up to, it's kind of just happens for me. I can't explain why or why not. It just happens. I feel the same way. I, I'm i really looking forward to the future and, like, meeting different people. So I don't think I've found the person that I can be totally honest with. I mean, I can be, I feel, but I don't want to fuck them every day, and I don't think that they're the greatest person. I'm judging them. That's why so I... Eh, bro, <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> bro, I gotta. Uh. If I want... No, like, you got to keep your standards, man. That's the thing. But we were talking about relationships, and we were talking about how you can't have relationships that don't better yourself. I'm not about that. It's like... It's the coffee maker, bro. Okay. It's a bomb about to... <laughs> oh, God. That, <laughs> Jesus no, Christ. No. No. <laughs> bro, it's real. No. <laughs> Are you up, Bart? Uh, I, ce- I celebrated Ramadan. Good for you, man. No, I didn't. I really wanted to, though. <laughs> I really wanted to. Where? Bro, you know, you, we're switching topics here, but yeah. Oh shit, we're bro. getting kind of racist. I, Why racist? What, what oh, social so justice <laughs> warrior? What the fuck is going on? Uh, <laughs> John, it's becoming you. At first, it was a joke. <laughs> now you're becoming it. He goes on Tumblr. Oh, okay. Actually, not really anymore. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but yes, yeah. I see. Oh shit! Okay, <laughs> it's one of those moments. It's one of those God moments. bless you, John, for being honest. I appreciate <laughs> you so much. I love you, John. Oh I'm shit! I'm so sweaty. Holy. Okay, yeah. Okay, so Tumblr. Tumblr is interesting. Did you post nudes? <laughs> no. See, no. that's what Tumblr is good for. <laughs> You're not wrong. Chicks. Um, but fucking Ramadan. Okay, man. I think that shit's very interesting. Okay. Not eating. You know why they do Ramadan? They want... So you don't eat or you don't drink water until the sun's down. It's either in the morning or at night. (coughs) Jesus Christ, cigarettes. (laughs) (laughs) Don't smoke drinks. And they... it's, it's It's a month of appreciation. It's a month of appreciation for the food we have. Do they fast the whole month? They fast the whole month. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And they can only eat at night. And so what's interesting about that is you they say you see you talk to God when you fast. There's there's a connection that you have with the higher being when you don't eat food and when you're when you're really hungry. When you're hungry. I don't. I've never experienced that in my life where I'm hungry, where I've never, where I haven't had food or water at my disposal. Uh huh. 
And my buddy, Troy, who I did a podcast with, podcast number seven, you guys would be interested in listening because that was a really good podcast. And in his culture, when he was 17 years old, he's, he from, from? he's from Aquazessing. You know Aquazessing, okay, yeah, right yeah. from Cornwall. Yeah, fuck Cornwall. I uh, don't know that place. Aquazessing, it's a, in, uh, I almost said Indian. I said that the fucking last <laughs> time when I was talking straight to his face, too. I am getting racist. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're right. I just want to say <laughs> fuck Cornwall. Yeah, okay, fuck Cornwall. No one knows where Cornwall is, and it sounds like the shittiest place ever, so fuck it Cornwall. It is, man. Okay, so Aquazessing is a native reserve border between Canada, US and Quebec. So it's right okay. on the border. And it's it's very culturally in tune. It's like, you know, what I mean, it's a real fucking native reserve and this guy had to go out to uh, as a coming of age had to go out in the forest for 4 days without food and water. Like he couldn't hunt or anything. It, well, he could, but uh, you don't have the skills. Right, okay, like, yeah, like yeah. you're out in the wilderness for with nothing, right, for four days. Yeah. And he said I, that was the most enlightening experience of his life, hitting that point of hunger, like feeling that point of hunger and having the, the inner revelations that go out, that come with yourself, that come to you as you're starving and dehydrated at the same time. I think it'd be a fucking enlightening experience. That's interesting. Because we take it for granted. We, are we do. So, we take it so for granted. Motherfucker, we can go to McDonald's whenever yeah. the fuck we want. Like, it's crazy. Tim Hortons. But no, can. literally. You can go to Tim Hortons and get fucking ice cap whenever the fuck you want. I do. Starvation is I probably the worst feeling in the world. Have you been there? No. But I just think it would probably be the worst feeling in the world. It kind of... I haven't gone... Four days, but like I've done two days, but I didn't really feel that starved. Because that was two days. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. I like. <laughs> I'm just saying, four days would be crazy to do no food or water. Four days, but the Ramadan they do it a month, John. Well, they. Jesus. Christ. At least from what I heard from Evan, he was saying they do either food or water, or like drink. that's true, but you can't. You but that would be him. crazy a month. Yeah. Like, I I have a few friends who have f- do that, and, like, I don't know if I could do that. No, well, be, I probably could, but... It would, it would be, be hard. hard. It would take a lot of self-discipline. Yeah. yeah. It would be a life-changing thing. It's like, that would... If you can stop yourself from not eating food or not drinking water for 40 days straight, when the sun's up, you could probably do anything. Your willpower would be fucking through the roof okay, at so that point. Okay, so when the sun's up. When the sun's up, you can't do anything. Okay. But when you get the sun's down, you can have as many fucking hamburgers as you want. Okay. But you can't eat pork. Well, yeah. <laughs> so wait, you can eat during the night? Yeah. So. It's not like you go. People would die. Yeah, 40, 40 days. <laughs> you would die. There, Forty days yeah, a week. no, you just don't eat when the sun's up. But still, think about the self control that it requires. Imagine not eating, especially so they follow the lunar cal- calendar. They uh, Muslims do, and usually it's in like the winter or uh, fall when the days when it fucking gets dark at five. But it's the middle of a summer right now. It, it just ended. Imagine going from fucking like five thirty in the morning to like nine at night without eating. It'd be wild. It'd be cr- it'd be, yeah. And doing be, that every and not, day for forty days. for forty days with no water. Crazy. You guys, you you told me that you wanted to get into a talk about religion. That was me. Uh, <laughs> you wanted to talk yeah. about religion. I said I don't want to talk no, about I, this at three a.m. because I'm out of my mind. I thought <laughs> it. <laughs> I thought it would be interesting at least because you know it would be. Yeah, I mean, let's do it. What, am I what do you about? What do you want to talk about? Religion ah. was. Well, what do you your believe initial, in? That was fucking, you know. Oh, okay. What did you say? What? What did you say? Like, do you believe in God? This is a very interesting conversation. I, I don't, but I really, really want to. Okay. I, there, and there's a difference. I don't know where I heard this from, but there is a difference between religion and God. I 
one hundred percent agree. There is a difference 100% there. One hundred percent agree. And I just think, why would you not believe that there is someone looking out for you? Why would you not believe that there's hope that you're gonna that it's gonna be all right? Everything in the end's gonna be all right. If you believe in God, why would you not want to believe that there's a man up in the sky saying, "I'm following you. I'm watching you." There's a huge difference. I really want to, but my um, but like that's one side of my brain. The other side of my brain is like this is all fucking random. We're just like it just happened to be this way. This collection of molecules that we are seventy percent water. Blah blah blah. It's just all random. I so I'm I'm lost. It's a contradiction in my mind. Mm-hmm. What do you What do you think? As a as a person, Nathan, as a person <coughs> growing up in an extremely religious household, you not said, extremely. Okay. Not that's not what I said. <laughs> not raping little kids and shit, right? That's, that's not, not religious. Really what man. are you talking about? That's just fucked up, bro. No, there was an article in the Catholic Church that there were 514 children that were sexually assaulted by priests. That is yeah, fucking there was some case that's not that a came part out. of the religion. That is, and the result hey. of the religion, but it's not a part. Of oh, it. that's interesting. And there was another. There was a, an old church in Ireland from the 1700s. Yes, I heard about that. That's fucked up. And there was a tomb. There was an underground tomb. There were like 300 kids buried. Yeah. An underground tomb under a Catholic church. Yep. Bro, this shit, you're worried about some fucking transgender pissing beside yeah. your little seven-year-old kid? Like, what the fuck? Don't go to church, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> For real, though. Okay, so what... That's a result of the religion? In what, in what aspect? I think that... I don't know where to start, but I guess I'll start by saying I think that people's beliefs are the most important and powerful aspects of existence. Because people's beliefs inform everything they do. Right? Inform everything they do, or... Are the the essence of the person. Yes. Uh, Yes. Right? Okay. So religion is all about belief. So I think religion is probably the most powerful force in the world. But Because you you can't make someone believe something they don't want to. Why do you think there's so many people who believe global warming doesn't exist, believe the world's flat, because they ignore facts, and they're like, I believe... Right? Don't you think that religion is not the only belief you can have, though? Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, you said it's a form of belief, and that's why you think religion is the most powerful thing. Can't yeah, you but have the thing about religion, though, can, is that religion... Hey, 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 can't you have belief in science? Yes, you can. But religion... Uh, if you are a religious person, your religion informs your entire life. Right? Because you need to live as a good Christian, you need to live as a good Muslim, as a good Jew, whatever, right? I believe in God, but I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if I would call myself religious, because I think religion is separate from God. Yeah, religion is a dude. Let's let's look at the Bible. Some a human being wrote the Bible over here. (laughs) A human being wrote the Bible. Yeah. Not an angel. Are you sure, man? Yes, bro. Jesus, though. No, he didn't. Okay. (laughs) A human being wrote the Bible. A human being who had his own agenda, who had his own beliefs, who had his own motives, who had his own ideas. And the motherfucker was written like... 2,000-something years ago. No, but and it's been rewritten by however many fucking... It's like any translated text. It's been worked and reworked, written and rewritten by so many different people, passed through so many different hands with people who have had so many different ideas and opinions that it's not, it's separate. Yeah. It, religion and God are not the same thing. I 100% believe that. Yeah. Because religion is created by man. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. That's very true. And it's like. But when did you come up with that? You're saying you grew up in a religious household. When did yeah. when did you have that revelation? Probably when I was 19, when I went to Australia. Nin- that late, eh? Well, would you? No, say- that's when I fully 
committed to that revelation. Okay. Would you say you were brainwashed? No. <laughs> to a certain aspect? Do you think you were brought, you were put into an ideology and you... What is brainwashing? Because your parents raise you, right? Yeah. Are you brainwashed by your parents? Yeah. Okay. So if you say that you're brainwashed then you're by your parents, then I guess we're all brainwashed by our parents. Right? Unless you can detach yourself from your parents, unless you realize that they are just well, another human well, walking down the street. That's what I did. Yeah. I realized that they're just people. Yeah. And I need to make my own choices in my life. Uh, like when I went to Australia for five months, that was part of, that was a religious thing. Was it? Yes. Was it through the church? Yes, it was. Interesting. So I had never At least really been not just raping kids. No. <laughs> God bless. God, God bless. Okay. God yeah. bless people who don't rape children. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> you started this, man. Shut up. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, Sorry to interrupt. So I'd never really been a, that connect. Like, a lot of people who are religious go to church, have a church community, you know, hang out. Bible study, whatever, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that growing up because my parents lived pretty far away from the local church. So, like, I never felt connected to a church community at all, right? So, when I went to Australia, that was the first time I'd ever been surrounded. Did you? Or, uh, submersed in the religion. Did you, like, when you were going to church as a young child, did you have, like, those... Like those self-talk moments when you're sitting there by yourself and you're like, w what, what is mean? this? Like, let's say when, because I've been to church a couple of times with my buddies, mm -hmm. like when I was really young and like I'd go over to her house or not her house, man. I would have been a baller bro. <laughs> <laughs> back in the day when I was 12. I was like, no, when I go over to my buddy, like buddy's houses and we'd, it'd be a Saturday, right? And it'd be like the only night I have get to have a sleepover. And then I'd have to wake up on Sunday and go to church with them. <sighs> and like, I wasn't religious. I was, I, Excuse that was me. heard clearly on this. <laughs> yeah. There was no getting away from that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember having those like, and this is only because I wasn't really religious too, but, but like, I remember going and praying on Jesus's fucking <clears throat> little crib and like, <laughs> No, this is no fucking little crib. No, it was a little crib I know, of baby Jesus. Funny. It's just a funny image. <laughs> I'm fucking praying Jesus fuck on your crib. <laughs> I don't know what to say to you. I'm really nervous. <laughs> no, but like I'd go and I'd be like, well, am I supposed to like feel something? Am I supposed to be like talking to someone right now? Is there something that's supposed to be happening as I'm doing? Was that like self talk? happening when you were younger going to church with I your family? I honestly don't know because like I said we didn't go to church often and That's interesting. So I, I you don't remember that religious son. Not really. My parents have always understood the difference between the church religion and God, right? Uh, okay, true. And that's See, I, I love my I parents for that. Different perception. I had a different perception when you explained it to me. I thought it was like pretty heavy and you kind of found your way out of it not no not really it's more like my parents are religious but they understand that religion is not god yeah so true that's so they let you listen to metallica <laughs> well <And> god bless <laughs> well i had to do some convincing actually for real i did because my parents Spit it out here. You I'm just trying to skate and explain it, bro. T today, you <laughs> <laughs> that woman, she she Billy was like, Ma "Hurry the fuck up, bro. Billy That's Madison." So That's so classic. The only I good Adam when I started, Sandler movie. <laughs> when I started listening to metal, I had to convince my parents that it wasn't satanic. No, for real. <laughs> for real. What do you mean, though? But that's because they had. What the do you mean? What do you, you mean, had to I convince mean? your parents you were like, what was that like? What do you well, mean? I, I How just, do you convince Okay, someone, shut up. Shut bro, up. Bro, I am not possessed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise you I'm but, not possessed. But, like, they, the reason I had to convince them was because they had this perception that a lot of people have. 
that metal is like for disturbed people. You know it what is. I'm saying? Oh, fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right, John? And they were only worried about me. Yeah, John's right? a little disturbed. <laughs> he is, though. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> they were more worried about me than they were like, oh, our religion. They were like, are we sure we should let you listen to this? You know what I'm saying? I thought you'd be slitting your wrists while you're listening to fucking Screamo. Well, I was in a bad place when I discovered metal. True. So, But I, I found this Christian website called Plugged In that is so Christian it kind of makes me vomit a little bit. But I think I've heard of it. It had this review for Kill Switch Engage, Disarm the Descent, which is my favorite album of all time. And because the lead singer is Christian from that band. Yeah. And I was like, yo... This is the stuff he's actually singing about. So These are the funny. lyrics. This is not satanic. It's far away <laughs> from that. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's so Because they thought that all metal is all this shit because they never listen to metal. You know what I'm saying? They just have the public perception. And then I was like, no, it's not like that. And they're like, okay, cool. You can listen to metal. Yeah, yeah. And just the anger. It's kind of just the initial... The initial perception. And now my mom is get. actually a fan of metal. It's hilarious. My God dad doesn't like it at all, but my mom likes it. <laughs> I, had, I had to convince my parents about hip hop too. It's well, like yeah, you, because you, the public perception is so bad. Yeah, right? no, yeah. At least it true. was. Yeah, but there wasn't. No, it's was just like, uh, like, what is? What are you talking about? Like, well, I, that was, I had to send my dad "Love Yours" by J Cole to fucking right. like, <laughs> bro, just listen to this. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Ignore the N word and just listen. All right, that is a yeah. great song. That is a great song, bro. Like, yeah, but it was less to do with religion, more to do like we want to make sure you're okay. Yeah. Okay. So they, I see, I got a different perception from what you're talking about it. Like, I thought you were like deep. No? I thought you were deep. deep. Bible thumpers? That's what I'm saying. No, I've never been like that. Like, I thought you were walking around with a cross and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. The power of Christ compels you. Well, when I went to Australia, I was kind of in that kind of environment a little bit. Because I was, I lived at a church for five months. You couldn't escape it. And I realized during that five months that this was not for me. I believe in God. Yeah. My, and what, what do you the mean way God? I believe in God. What do you mean One God, sec, I'll though. get to that. Sorry, it's such your foot, John. And There's a that's candle a little bit, and I have my shirt off. Nathan has it's a, a shirt little off. bit gay. We John, should have got some wine. <laughs> John, take your shirt off. Join the club. <laughs> I'm good. Nah, man, we want to see those panda bear titties, you know what I'm saying? All okay, right, go on. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, you were talking about... Uh, you lived in a church. For five months. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. And it was a really nice church, actually. It was really big. Well, because they get all the taxpayer money. They don't have to pay shit on taxes, bro. Oh, we can talk about it in what a bit. What a fucking... <laughs> what are you saying? You don't have to... What is... The... This is some Illuminati shit you don't have to pay. Don't even Poverty talk taxes, about Illuminati, bro. All right. That shit's real, dog. No, it's not. It's not called Illuminati, but it's... There's something. Okay, let's... <laughs> let's get back to the topic <laughs> at hand for now. Oh, shit. What was I saying, though? John reminded you. You were living in a church for five yeah. months. You yes. were surrounded by all these fucking Jesus kids. No, no, no. They weren't Jesus kids. They just believed more than me. Or they they believed in the religion more than I did. It's really Okay. Cool. But, yeah. like, I love those people to death. I Those were the first people that I ever truly, truly connected with Yeah. in my life. Yeah. Because that was the first time I ever let myself be truly vulnerable with someone. And, like, I heard from so many people there, because it's a program called OLT, right? And they have, every year there's people that come, new people, right, for that program. And I heard people tell us so many times that they'd never seen an OLT group be so close. True. So, yeah, I love those people. Those people are my friends for life, man. I still Skype them, like, all the time. Well, not all the time, but, like, at least once a month. Got buddies in New Zealand, Australia, Korea, Japan, Germany, Lebanon. See, I was having a conversation with my buddy the other day, Jacob, and we we're talking <coughs> about religion, and he was pulling up the argument of all religion is all bad. You know I what? I don't see that at all. No, the thing is, I agree to a certain extent. I, religion has done some really fucked up things. But even now, it's the source of all our problems, other than money, right? Money is money. If you follow the money, you're going to find the evil. Well, that's a big problem, yeah. 100%. But it's 
it's you get to this certain point where like you said the the kids you connected with while you're at that at that church for five months in Australia when you're doing an exchange but it's like there's a point where you have to realize that whatever a person has to do to cope with this life it, it it's fine as long as you're not hurting someone therefore religion can't be eradicated right as long as you're not hurting someone a I, religion is not all bad there's that someone that come needs out. to include yourself too eh are you do you think religion can hurt you i do even to the slightest extent even yeah because it's interesting you can put yourself into the religion too much, I think. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that can hurt you. But do you, do you think these people that you went to for your five-month exchange, do you think that this camaraderie was learned through the Bible no. and learned through their practice? This so was just purely them? Uh, well, you have to understand something, though. People's beliefs are a part of who they are, right? Yeah. And your beliefs can change because I am not the same person that I was when I was there. Yeah. Right? But that's because I, be- I see the world differently. I believe different things. Mm. Right? So saying, what, what exactly, is through the Bible, what were you saying? Well, I, I'm talking about the camaraderie. You said you've never connected with people like this in your life. Do you think at that, that point? Okay, but do at you, that point, do you think that these people may not have ever gotten to that level of human connection without being religious and without the lessons that were taught through religion? Maybe, but I couldn't tell you because it's who they are. It's a part of who they are. Yeah. So if if I wasn't born religion religious, I would be a different person because I wouldn't have that part of me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can't answer that. I don't know. True. What do you think about religion, John? Were uh, you born religious? Uh, no. Were you baptized? Yes. Yeah. Same. Um, Bro, my, we're not going to get my family fucking wasn't, by the devil. Like, not a oh, lot of my fuck. family was religious, though. It was just they did it because that's what it was just kind of done. In my yeah. family. Yeah. It's like you grow up with something and you're like, that's yeah. what I am. So it's yeah. like, who cares? I got splashed with water, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and nice. do you, hey, do you believe in exorcisms? Do you believe in getting possessed by the devil? It's my mom. That was her biggest fear is, is being possessed wait, by the devil. Were you religious? No, not at all. So is your mom religious? Uh, she was raised Catholic, but I didn't. I never went to church with my family ever once. Okay, so they didn't raise you religious. No, but not at their all. experience was different than yours. Yes. Okay. My mom went to a Catholic school, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Where was I, she? I was never raised uh, religious. I never went, but my mom was fine with <sighs> me, like going to church with my friend if I slept over. Uh-huh. Like I, she was fine with that. She thought that experience was was probably good for me, right? Like the well, ghost. Probably right. One hundred percent. God bless my mother. Yeah, she seems like a nice lady. She is. You would have had a good conversation on the ride home. Yeah, you know, I wish I could have come to Miss. Bro, Kathy, that's but all it would have been worth. You could have stayed at my house, Doug. You fucked up, John. You fucked up. But uh, yeah, no, uh, I wasn't raised religious because a lot of my family wasn't. But I had a lot of friends that were very religious, so I ended up going to church anyway. Yeah, you went to church. Yeah, that which experience. religion are we talking about, though? Christianity. Okay, cool. Because I know you Christianity. Yeah, yeah. cool. Because uh, I know you had a lot of Middle Eastern friends, right? Not at that time. Okay. You you want to take a break? High school. I just want to grab another beer. You want to take a break? Or you got something to say? I can keep going if you want. I want to smoke a cigarette. I have okay, my mom. We can take listen. a break then. Okay, let's do it. I I have the thought in my head. I can keep it okay. in there. Yeah, keep it in there. Because well, that's where we're gonna jump off. Figure it out, dude. Learned experience? All right, we're back. No, um, okay. So what I was saying was, yes, my parent, at least my parents weren't religious. Not a lot of the family I knew, at least, was religious. Or no, some of them are. But um, my friends, a lot of them were really religious and, like, their families. And I'd be over at their houses a lot, so... I ended up, I guess, becoming Christian because I was going to church and everything. 
believed in God. But the th- it's kind of a short story. It wasn't that interesting, but... Yeah. Um, Don't ever say that about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he's kind of lame. With me, tr- like, I tried talking with God. I tried praying, and I was... So what do you mean you tried talking with God? Just, like, praying, you know. Do you really think you can talk with God, though? I don't... Can you talk, or can you just receive messages? I guess receive... To me, I don't know, really. But uh, uh, what you're thinking... Are you thinking of talking to God in, like, a certain perception of that you have in your mind? Do you think God can come in many different forms? Because that's what I believe, Oh, well, I do now, but at the time, I was a kid. Like, I was in grade six, like, five or whatever. Put um, up your fucking hand. Put that hand down. Well, like, I have a, I have a, <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, and, like, I just realized, like, all this mess up. Because at least how I perceived God because of Christianity and all the people around me, that God was all-powerful, like, f- very forgiving. Good thing I heard from Neil deGrasse Tyson is... He, he could not be both of those because of all this messed up stuff like tsunamis, whatnot. He can't be all good, all forgiving then. So that was kind of my train of thought at the time. So I stopped believing in God because I'm like, well, there's all these wars, you know. I wasn't feeling good at the time. There's tsunamis, all these natural disasters, a lot of starvation, whatnot, so on. So that kind of got me out of believing God because of my perception of what God was at the time. Yeah. And not until very recently, DMX, listening to his music. New stuff or old stuff? He, uh, both. Let me fly. Both of them. What my one dog my said, Let Bark. Me Fly is one of the best song, hip hop songs away ever. Is one of my favorites. Uh, I don't know if I know it. Um, <laughs> okay, so but what about DMX? It wasn't that I had the same beliefs as him. He just got me back into the thought of God because he was talk. He does a lot of like, he does this God voice or devil voice, and then there's him, and he's like talking with either the God or talking the devil. Talking through his conscious. Which I love, personally. Man, he's, he's one of the best rappers ever a lot. Sad he's story. one of the best rappers. Sad story. That, he it is a sad story. just got arrested, I think. Oh. He was he was charged for charged, yeah. charged for tax evasion, and yeah. he could spend like the rest of his life in prison for tax evasion. Which I was excited for his new album. Really? I <laughs> thought you were about to say I was excited for him to spend <laughs> the rest of his life in prison. Because he like, was, like, was there was talk, there was talk of the new album. But to go back to my point, so listening to him, just kind of how he kind of seemed to talk about God, how God was showing him, you know, this is the pathway you can go that will help better you. But DMX was taking the opposite way, doing stuff that was bad for him, you know, drugs, whatnot. So that kind of made me getting on, like, thinking about it a lot. And I believe in God now again, but my perception is that God is not, he's not good or bad per se, but he will show you a pathway that will help you with whatever in life, you know, maybe he'll put the thought in you of going to school for your passion or whatever, say, and you can either decide to take that pathway or take some other ways that may not be good for you, but that's your choice. He doesn't like force you down a certain path. So that's kind of... There, I have a bunch more beliefs, but yeah. that's how I got back into believing in God. It's an interesting thing. It's like when when it's... It's like looking at your parents, right? Like they're not the all-knowing. God is yeah. not the all-knowing. There's a yin and a yang, oh, which is what just comes to my mind. It's like there's this balance. Well, yeah, there, there's... There, there, there isn't a God without a devil, right? Like the God wouldn't exist without the devil. We need both those sides because without that, there is imbalance. But yeah, like I don't see God as this person you can talk to now. I see it as God's pretty much just all around. And like, again, we'll put show you that path or you can take another. 
You can't just like talk to him. He won't. He won't no. even show you. Or he'll she, real, he'll he, re- it. Really, I don't. Okay, see, yeah, let's okay, be social no. justice no, warriors no, 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 no. here. Okay, I feminism, women, powerful. Yeah, it's because they can vote. I don't see. Shut up, bro. <laughs> I don't see God as a person. Is what yeah. I'm trying to say here. It's yeah. No, I definitely agree. It's like <laughs> I do just say he or she just because when you're about. talking about what most people see as a person, but to me, like I just see. God is just some spirit, really, or something. It's how you something. paint the picture, right? You put a he or she. Yeah. It's how you paint the picture. It's what we're all That's why I was just to. like, oh, no. Yeah, it, no, it, it makes sense. You don't want to be a social justice warrior. Type. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so fucking Tumblr. Get <laughs> we get it. That's what I hated about Tumblr, honestly. That's so funny. I was the hip-hop side that was just, like, posting hip-hop quotes and stuff. But it's like, it's God, it's not a person, but it's like... Whatever that force may be, and we often say it's God because that is the imagery that is put in our mind since day one, right? But that is that is the reward. That is that feeling you have when you're honest. That is that feeling you have when you're being true to yourself. And that will guide you, that feeling, that, that uplifting, like the feeling I had after our last conversation. Or the conversation before First last. One. Yeah, I don't remember the last one. First I was hammered. Podcast, yeah, man. I was hammered. <laughs> <laughs> I was not in tune with God at that point. <laughs> I was sinning hard. Fuck, bro. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like you that uplifting that that I don't even know that euphoria that you follow when you know that he is he is rewarding you. I'm just saying he like John yeah, said. Well, yeah, it's fine. It, it's is, just, it is rewarding you're placing you. a label. Yeah. It, really? Fucking labels. <laughs> it is rewarding you for doing what you feel is right. And God's different in everybody's mind, right? Yeah. Well, like I probably I know I yeah. see God different than the actual religious people in my family. Yeah. But like I have it's kind of like I found all these relig, like I got Ugh. taught about different God religions bless. and take a shot. <laughs> and what I was take a shot every time someone burps. <laughs> pretty saying. much, I took the stuff that I believed from certain religions, and that's why I kind of like what Nathan was saying before that God and religion are separate, because I have my own beliefs that have been brought to my mind from different religions so like reincarnation karma like that's different stuff that i believe in so so is karma god i think karma is god well i Car- don't karma know. is the way the universe works yes so i guess that kind of is saying that karma is god mm-hmm. i guess because Car- for me it's not i don't see it as The bad actions you... Because some people... I know I say it as a joke, though, sometimes, that, oh, that's just karma. Like, if someone says shit to me, even if it's as a joke, which normally it is, and then they, like, trip or something, I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's karma. But to me, how I actually believe karma is that, say you do something bad or good in this life... Yeah. That won't affect you until your next life. So, like, say you have all this bad karma, you could become some, like, maggot in your next life. Or if you have all this good karma, maybe you'll be, like, a billionaire in your next life. That's super interesting. Have you ever studied um, Buddhism? I was doing. I'm going to say I I did world religions, which I don't think is is a very. Hey, are you in that world religions class right now? No. He got no, exempt, in but. high school. True. So I don't see it as fully learning those religions because I think you have to learn it from people that are actually in that religion, you know, talking with maybe Buddhist monks or priests. But that's or exactly whatever. one of their doctrines is if well, that's, you... I took it kar- from there. Yeah, you, your, your bad karma will affect you in the next life. But even why I believe in karma so much is earlier today, what's... What's the lead singer of? Uh, uh, oh, Chester Bennington. Yeah, Chester Bennington. Rest Sad in peace. Story. Yeah, 
from Lincoln Park who <sighs> passed sad, away today. It's very sad. But I was scrolling through the comments on one of the Facebook posts of of his uh, someone announcing his some news place announcing his death, and there was someone who commented and was like, you know, how can you how can you take away this comment is kind of irrelevant. It's like how can you how are you so it wasn't I, I don't even want to put it that way is how can you be in such a terrible place that you leave a wife and six children behind? And then under that comment, he posted his advertisement for his personal trainer. He's like, Sean, best personal trainer in Miami. And I was like, that's karma. No one is going to click on that. No one wants to be your personal trainer because you're using it for such a selfish reason. That is karma. You are not going to get anything from that. You that is that is putting you down because you are it's coming from such a nasty, nasty place. You're commenting on this guy's death, but you are advertising yourself at the same t- time, trying to get. That's disgusting. No, it's terrible. But that's that's just that. I feel like karma karma affects you instantly. You you are saying that it affects you in your next life, yeah. but I think karma affects you instantly. Whatever you do, if you're honest with someone, you're going to get that back. If you're not, you're going to get that back instantly. It's who you keep around you. What is Where does karma originate? I don't know. What religion? What uh, That I know of personally, it could be before then, is Hinduism. Because Buddhism came from Hinduism. True. I mean, I guess That's it's, what my knowledge, at least. I don't know. Maybe. I guess relevant in all... You know, if you're a good Christian, you're going to go to heaven. If that's, I, I guess, basically, yeah. Because, like, it's personally, the I... It's the same concept, but it's a different wording. I take in that... That's one of the things I take from Buddhism, the whole karma thing. And I don't really see a heaven or a hell. I do see a god and a devil, though, as kind of all around. For me, I find... It's kind of weird to talk about. I've actually never talked about this with anyone. So opening up more, oh, but shit. the fucking can. One opener. reason when, like, sometimes at night or whatever, I'll walk to Tim Hortons, say, which is a common place for me to walk to. You don't addicted. even like Tim Hortons. Or I'll just walk around. <laughs> Addict. And one <laughs> reason where I kind of get paranoid is I feel like someone's following me. And sometimes, a lot of the times, that happens when I'm in a bad place. So kind of what I think is that maybe it's that kind of the devil or evil spirit, whatever, following, and I'm sensing that is what I yeah, think maybe. That's very – have you ever read the book The Four Agreements? No. You keep okay. talking about that. No, you need to I, give me that book. Yeah, no, Emily Emily has it. Well, I need to get it back from her. You really need to read it because it, it, it goes to the exact point you were just saying. It's like this life, there is no heaven and hell. Heaven and hell is what you create it right now. You were saying you were in a bad place, right? Yeah. You're saying that you feel like the devil is following you. That is your mind state placing you in hell. That is your that's, mindset placing you in hell, and you will get all the effects of hell. That's when an you're, interesting concept. It's a very interesting book. You guys need to read it. And when your mind is in hell, you will feel all those effects. When you said you were in a bad place, right? And you feel like the devil is following you, but that's only you. It's interesting how you notice that too, though. You feel, you understand your consciousness to a certain extent when you uh, feel your, your atmosphere affecting the way you feel, but you know that's all in your head. Yeah. But that's hell, and that is your choice whether you're in that, right? The devil works at Tim Hortons. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. I want my ice cast though. I mean, that's the devil. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, I kind of that, and I've. I don't know why I did this, but like, I can't draw for shit. But I kind of drew sort of what I perceived. If there was a actual being or person of that, what it would be. I kind of see. I don't see it as one devil i see it as like different spirits that can take like i know tech nine i get a lot of my beliefs actually from, from rappers, rappers oddly man me too rappers gr- rappers made me the man who i am today i know hip hop made 100 percent, dude but like tech nine talked about how there's like 
different personalities to him. Like he sees, I know Sean Cram, Metal, Slipknot, saw there's different personalities. And I know both of them see the clown as sort of this bad person in them. So they see like, for Tech 9, he said he saw this clown is what he called it in him that was like the one that was cheating on his wife you know doing all these drugs whatnot and so i kind of thought like that kind of got me thinking of like what i saw these different beings as maybe so i ended up drawing one bad drawing but it's just kind of it's your perception it's art yeah well, like I'm it might not be a, shitty art, but it's art. It's art. It <laughs> it's an honest I just, expression. I wanted to draw it down, and that's know. interesting. What do you think about the afterlife? What's gonna happen? What's what happens after your light? Your your light goes out. As I said, well, I didn't fully say. You but didn't kind fully. Of you didn't fully explain, but the whole reincarnation thing. So, you know, you die, and like I believe we all have spirits. And there's so what? What do you mean, spirits? What is the spirit? There's just like it's, it's kind of like I see it as sort of your personality is kind of your spirit. So it's what you are as a person. Where did do, where does that live though? Does that live in your brain or no. does that live somewhere else? I honestly couldn't really tell you. Well, what do you what do you when, think happens after you die? Well, like. I see it as that spirit will leave. It's kind of like a place for it to be. So, like, right now there's this spirit in me. And when I die, that spirit will leave and go to wherever. Does that spirit contain consciousness? Honestly, I sort of think so because... I don't know if they this person wants me saying their name, but I know someone who Fuck they it. were like seeing. Well, it's not a bad thing. I just don't. It's personal no, information, yeah, yeah. No, so you, I'm not going to give a specific God bless name. You, John. Sweetheart. But, like they Love said, you, they were at some place and they'd never been there before and stuff, and they were just getting like this. It felt like they had been there before. So I kind of think that there is a consciousness from previous lives, but it's kind of hidden away. That's and interesting maybe you if say that. You go to say a place that you were in a previous life. It it may possibly kind of click in your head, and you know you're like, this seems really familiar. You know what my mom's doing right now? So she's writing a book about sort of autobiographical but she's writing a book about how memories are passed on through DNA that's so it's sort of like the same thing you're talking about right is that spirit passed on through your DNA or is that your spirit passed on through some other avenue I haven't gone into the thought process enough yet to look at that so I, again, can't tell you. Do you think your actions today will affect your next life? Yes. Whatever that is, yeah? Well, yeah, that's the whole karma thing that I believe. See, it's hard for me It's hard for me to wrap that concept around my mind because I totally... It's like that other thing I was talking about, about believing in God. It's like I got one half of my brain that tells me... I really want to believe in God. And there's this other side of me that says there's just no way anything's real because we're all just a random makeup of chemicals. And that's where it's hard for me to think that anything's after this. I haven't thought of on that. Well, you need to hurry up, Nathan. You're fucking waddling around. But yeah, no, I kind of... I'm a little drunk. I'm not going to lie. That's hilarious. I love that. I just kind of... (laughs) Round of applause for Nathan for don't being a, a little Don't drug. applaud that. Fuck yes. Um, 
But yeah, no, I kind of just keep my beliefs to myself for the most part, unless someone asks, because yeah. I don't really like the whole pushing your, like, say, re- it happens with religion, of course, but kind of pushing your beliefs or religion onto someone. Like, you, yeah, you can I respect discuss, you, John. You can discuss your religion. So, like, again, I'll go to DMX because I don't have the same exact beliefs as him, but he, him talking about God and his beliefs and his songs, not all of them, but a lot of his songs made me think about what I believe myself. It's interesting. So like maybe you're talk maybe what I'm saying now about my beliefs to one of you two, you'll start thinking about it. Maybe you'll start to believe that. Maybe you'll be like, No, I don't believe that. Cool, that's what you believe. Maybe you're wrong, maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? As long as you attack it with an open mind. But, like, Uh that's why I tend to just keep my own beliefs to myself because I don't want to seem like I'm just pushing all my shit onto someone. Is it... it, What... I I agree with you. Fuck anyone who pushes their shit on. But there's got to be a point where you have to be able to express yourself without feeling like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I do, like... This podcast right now, I'm yeah. able to discuss my beliefs without feeling like it's being pushed on you guys. Is it the other person that makes you feel like it's being pushed on? I. It's more just I. It the topic doesn't come up, so yeah, it's no, more. That's very true. It's just the topic doesn't come up, so I don't true. talk about it. No, like I'm if really someone asks asked me, cool, I'll tell them what I believe. But is that an issue? I was listening to a podcast today, and it was like you know they did. So there was this in Princeton. They had this program. I totally forget what it's called. I'm blanking, but it's it, this program that you go through to become a sermon. Speaking of religion, you become a preacher okay. or whatever, like a, a, a head priest? of a Catholic. Sure, but okay. I think it's called a sermon. I, they said the word sermon. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. I don't know what the that, fuck I'm talking about. I think about. that has, if th- if I'm thinking of what you're talking about, yeah. it has to do with like giving sermons at church. Maybe? Okay, true. Like a deacon. Yeah, I fucking love it. Oh, Jesus Christ. You just came up with another word. I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't know. A deacon is a but real you, word. You say that it never comes up. I know it's a real word, but I have no idea what the fuck it means. That's okay. God blind. I love okay. you, Evan. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but they were saying that there isn't. They so there was this experiment that was made that you have to go to a recording studio to and I'm totally ripping this off the Tim Ferriss podcast <laughs> and they there was God a, bless Tim actually, Ferriss God bless I Tim Ferriss I watch a skateboarding vlog and he feels the same way you do about Tim Ferriss like he watches all his podcasts bro he, he like, is the loves go that listen dude. to Tim Ferriss he's a genius <laughs> fucking he they were talking to this guy who said there was this Princeton study going on. That the sermons they go to um, the go recording studio and you got to put down your your most fif- your best fifteen minutes of whatever your speech your your pre your priest shit your uplifting fifteen minutes that you got to record and put on audio. Okay, and it's like they made them all late, and they set up a homeless person waiting outside of the recording studio. And ask them for some money. Okay. And you walk by, and all these people were late, right? And they didn't give the homeless person money. They didn't even acknowledge this homeless person. I you, these were supposed to be the sermon. To about that. Exactly. You were talking about how there's not, it never comes up in conversation, your beliefs about is there a problem with us being too busy, with us being too focused on other things to really, that's super annoying. That is. It's someone upstairs running that. We live in an apartment building. Well, I'm a broke college kid. <laughs> God happened. bless you, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. But you go, you go. Go. Is there a problem with being too busy? Is there a problem with the lack of connection? This was the the last podcast I had with my buddy Troy. What What can you do though? Well, like I'll you, say, you can fucking meditate. Yeah, motherfuckers need to stop for <laughs> fifteen minutes and just. No, I agree with that. <sighs> I've heard a lot. Like I have. Um, we'll go now in my high school career where I met a lot. Because my school was mainly people that followed Islam. 
So I had some friends that we talked for like hours. They because I wanted to know more about Islam, and Wait, so they you were went to a school that was majority Islam. Yeah, where in London? Yeah, majority Islam. Shout out to Westminster. So you were a minority. Yeah, as a white kid. Yeah. True. Kind of, yeah. Interesting. So like my friends, like I really wanted to know about Islam, and they were very open to just discussing it with me and. They talked about meditation and how they did it, and for them, it just kind of like maybe they were going through a stressful day, whatever, and it just kind of calmed them down, just made them not think about whatever they're dealing with for that moment. Is meditation just, a part of Islam? I think it's sort of like they, at least how they told me, was them them those people themselves saw prayer as meditation for okay, them. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. You sit down, so, like, and you they lay on pray, your and that was their kind of meditation to like kind of just not worry about anything, just really foc- anything, just, just focus on God and whatnot. Focus on your breath. Focus on being yeah. in the present. So, like they said, it had a lot of benefits for them, which was kind of interesting. I mean, I, nothing is very hard. For man, a lot of yeah, people. Man, well, like, here, could, let me tell I you. I love sorry. doing nothing because it keeps you in the moment, right? Let me tell you. When I go to the gym, I go to the gym. I work out for my hour, and then I go sit in that sauna. Every time I sit in that sauna, I say that bug too, John. <laughs> Every time I sit in that sauna, I'm just like, I'm going to try to meditate. I'm going to try to sit here and focus on my breath. Focus on nothing else. Whenever I, whenever I have a thought, I come back to my breath. I realize that's a thought. But I come back to not being in my head. Bro, I cannot sit in that motherfucker for 15 minutes. I'm going to keep trying, but it is so hard. It's so hard, but it's so good. It's so good for you. uh, To go to Joe Rogan's podcast, I know he's a heavy advocator of the, like, isolation chambers where he said he goes in there again when he's... when stressful he's stoned or as heat. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, he needs to just think of, just focus on this specific thing. He'll go into isolate himself. But even meditation is not focusing on anything. It's you got well, like, to sit there and think about your breath. And even when you have a thought, the focus is for post-meditation. When you're in meditation, you're not supposed to focus on anything. You're supposed to be breathing you're supposed to focus on your breathing, and whenever you have a thought, you need to recognize that thought, and you need to come back to your breathing. Uh-huh. The the thought is for post meditation. That's how. That's what gets you to that thought. That's what gets you to focus on that thought. It's like you're you're beyond thought at that point during meditation. That is, that is the essence of meditation. Sorry to interrupt. No, that, <laughs> I Shit. pretty much said what I wanted to there. And he gets high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll go back to that thing about the homeless person. Here's one thing okay. I take from, at least I learned it from Islam. Yeah. One thing that I took from them is they're about always make like giving t- alms to the poor pretty much. Yeah. So anyone that maybe doesn't have less than you. And I know there's a lot of problems with... Yeah, I was going I was literally like people just people giving to ask money. You. Okay, that's uh, not what I was going to no, ask. No, no, no. <laughs> so like people giving yeah. money to um homeless people, they're worried about them going to spend drugs. That's why I know downtown Ottawa, I went there a lot cuz of work at night, so there were lots of homeless people, but the one thing where I was completely okay with was a lot of them honestly asked me for food specifically rather than Money, like, some of them would be like, oh, can I get some change? I'm like, I was coming out of McDonald's, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't have change. But then they're just like, oh, can I get, like, a cheeseburger or something? So I'm like, absolutely, because I had my debit card, so I'd just go in, God buy them bless a burger you. or God something. bless you, John, yeah. you beautiful son There's of lots You're of people that do that, dude. I think. No, there isn't. I promise yourself that there isn't and a like, lot of people that do that. I don't know. I found a lot of those people were really friendly because... I wasn't really, at least what I think, because I wasn't being super disrespectful, like, oh, no, fuck you, whatever. I was just like, I'm sorry, I don't have change or money on me. Yeah. And the ones that would ask me for food, I'd be like, yeah, I have my debit, so I'd buy them, like... 
it's about pizza, it, pizza, or whatever. It, it's about approaching. You know, you can't go into a situation with a quote unquote homeless person without empathy. It's like it, it goes with every interaction you have as a human being. It's like you have to approach that situation with empathy. You can't be like, oh, I'm worried about him spending this money on fucking heroin or something. <sighs> yeah. It's like you have to, you have to go into it with empathy. And God bless you for doing that because that's that's like you said, it's I think a lot of people do that. I doubt a lot of people do that. That's that's not of the norm. You know what I mean? I had a very interesting uh, go back to the last podcast I did with my buddy Troy, he works at the Mission in Ottawa, mm-hmm. and which home, which houses like 250 homeless people. And he, we had a very interesting conversation that you guys will be interested in listening to, I'm sure. But it's like you got to approach that situation with empathy because it's like those are people. They are people. They are. And you can't be worried about the what they are going to do because that's just assumptions. That's living assumptions. Going back to the four agreements, the book I read, the rule number one, there's four agreements, and rule number one is don't make assumptions. I fucking hate when people make assumptions. 100%. It's so fucking bad. It's, it, it, assumptions are limited by your perception. Yeah. That is all they are. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And especially with dealing with people like that. And when we were walking by the homeless, we went to the LCBO before we did this podcast. And yeah. it's like we were walking by and there was this guy asking for change. We None of us had change, but you have to acknowledge that person. I said, sorry, sir. Uh-huh. You have to acknowledge them. It, it, they are people. You have to deal with them like that. I always try to give money to them if they ask because that same guy was there the day yeah. before when I went to get milk yeah. from Loblaws and yeah. I gave him two bucks Loblaws he asked what the fuck I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Quebec okay <laughs> je parle français Sus, dude French Canadians are the worst I gave him you're not wrong you're not wrong <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't on. like Quebec but I gave him two bucks because he asked me for change for the bus and I was like okay I have money to give you man if someone's desperate enough to ask me for money, I'm going to give it to them if I can. John, expand on that. <laughs> um, I kind of said my whole He kind of said his piece, though. Yeah. You know, I just want to say something about Muslims. When I was fundraising in Australia, if I ever went to a place inhabited mostly by Muslims, I knew it was going to be a good day. Because they were very generous. They are. Like, so generous. This all, one guy had no change for me. He's like, hang on. He went to the bank and came back and gave me some money for me fundraising. And I was like, God bless like, you, Like, the area... I didn't... Where I lived in London was more white. But where I would hang out with my friends was the more majority... Not majority, but where more of the Muslims were in London... And, like, going back to that discussion with my friends, they noticed I was very interested in Islam. So they're like, hey, if you want to bring us back to, like, our house, we can get you one of our Qurans if you want to they're read up more on it. They're trying to convert you. <laughs> Are but you no, down on your luck, John? Are you looking <laughs> for, for a purpose? Cent? For a purpose? Well, come be a... <laughs> Come be a, a suicide bomber oh, jihad. Shit. Fulfill your purpose. Get filled with 72 virgins in your post life. Oh shit. What do you what do you all jokes aside, what do you think about is it, are these ISIS extremists representing Islam? No. We, not at all. Oh fuck no. Fuck that. I don't think any extremists, so we can say they're like the KKK of yeah, Islam. Yeah, we can say like ISIS the doesn't KKK of Islam. ISIS does not represent Islam. The KKK does not represent Christianity. Um, it's a facet of it. That's people I, taking the, it's it too people far. People who have a tainted, I think, corrupt um, opinion on whatever religion they are, See, and they think but, that. But that's they think that other people are wrong for their opinions. Where I know people that are Christian, Muslim. Not, I don't really know a lot of other people in religion, but mainly Christian, Muslim, and they're fine if, say, I was a Christian, 
and because I was at one point, and they're a Muslim, they're cool with that. I think people like ISIS, KKK, they're like, well, KKK is more racist, I think, more so than the whole religious where you don't have the same religion. It's more you're not white. But to go to ISIS, they're... (laughs) No, go ahead, John. They're not... I don't think they're just killing people that aren't Muslim. I think they are actually killing Muslim people. Well, yeah. And Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, pretty much every religion, there's that golden rule I've heard so much that not to do harm onto others, pretty much. Yeah. So they're not actually Treat yourself following. the way you would treat others. Yeah. Or treat others the way you would treat yourself. I am in fucking. So they have a treat the treat others the way you want to be treated. Fucking Jesus Christ! They have a corrupt vision and idea of their religion. Do you think think you need to be mentally unstable to believe in that? To hurt innocent people? Yes, I do. Where where does that come from? I could not tell you honestly. I just think. To think that killing all these people or wiping out, you know, a religion, a race, whatever. Yeah. You have to be a messed up individual to think that way. You totally do. And they do. That's what they use. They use social media to attract these totally disenfranchised young people who feel like they don't have a purpose feel like what you felt like when you were suffering through your shit i know what i felt like when i was suffering through my shit feel like you were what you you would cling on to anything right no okay well maybe not us because we don't have mental health issues but there can you can you can you understand someone joining quote-unquote isis as a young let's say white Male in America, they I've believe the it. lie. I have seen it. They believe a lie, but why do they believe the lie? Because they don't. I could never do that. Because my sense of self, of who I am, yeah, is too powerful. Yeah, for me to let somebody else influence the way I think. I think people who can submit themselves to this kind of lie. Don't have what I have, which is that understanding. strong sense of self. Yes. Understanding. <laughs> I, Whoa, it, blows, it always come back to that, it, dude. Whoa, we made a revelation it, in the last podcast, it guys. It blows my mind that people will let themselves be... Like, let's talk a second. Say, for instance, Nazi Germany. Yeah, a lot of people... Very interesting. They're just regular people who yeah. believe the lie and went... And committed atrocities. But right? can they not believe the lie? They Is, can. But they chose to I know believe the lie. Maybe. Can they? Yes. What, hap- what happens to them, though? They would probably die. I know there was a then lot. Then they can't. They You're can, fighting. though, but then they would die. You a- have to make that choice. A- Do a- you want to live and, be- and go along with this horror? Or do you want to die and stay yourself? I would choose to die and die as myself. Yo, I than live as someone I'm else. I'm sorry, but I wish I could make that statement. But there's something primal about survival that we all have in us that he, he, survival's you overrated, man. Okay, shut the fuck up. You're acting <laughs> like Gandhi right now, or God. Like you're not. You're a regular motherfucker. I if am. you were a regular motherfucker in Nazi Germany. And you chose not to believe that lie. Your risk, your family, your life, your everything is at risk. You're right. How hard is that? I'm not saying that. It's kind I'm of judging hard to those people. say how hard it is because we have it's not been there. It's almost impossible. But I'm not I'm saying, saying I'm judging those people. I'm not. I know you're not, but I feel like it would. It would be so fucking hard. Yeah. If if I was in Nazi Germany right now, I don't have a wife. I don't have a kid. Okay. Yeah. It's just me. Yeah. Only my life's at risk. Yeah. I would not do that. But if I was, if I did have a wife, if I did have kids, I don't know what I would do. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say what we would do when it, we have not 
probably been close to no, that. No, I feel like it's almost impossible because we haven't even... We haven't I, even come close to that We shit. haven't even come close to that yet. We haven't even come... I we fucking are, hope we don't. Holy shit. You don't think so? You I know, fucking hope we you don't. Know, you know what my personal opinion is? What? You know all this bullshit that goes on in our world? I feel like we need something like that to come... Uh, to get our senses straight. There's something... That needs to happen. We need to struggle. There's a lot of people in our society, North America, in Europe, that we have not struggled. Yeah. There needs to be something. There's a lot of mother, these social justice warriors, quote unquote, fucking social justice warriors. There are these people who have not struggled. Uh-huh. Joe Rogan was talking about this on his last project. We need something to happen. Not saying that it, we need to kill six million of a certain religion or race, but we need to. There needs to be something cataclysmic for us to come together. I think it's going to be climate change eventually. Eventually, uh-huh. when New York. And Miami get flooded because the sea levels are rising. We are going to come together. But something needs to happen that needs to bring us together because we are so divided at this point. <sighs> that goes to a totally different, uh, a totally yeah. other <laughs> subject. Yeah. I, I somewhat agree with you. I think that a lot of people have, don't have a sense of self. But do you think struggle is important to I find do. that sense of self? I do. Okay. I think well, that's, I know, what, that's my point. Do we need struggle on a population basis or do I we need struggle so. on an individual basis? I think we need struggle on a populational basis at this point to become globalized, to understand the impact that these 1.6 million Muslims are facing that we aren't. Billion, sorry, million, 1.6 billion Muslims. What do you mean? We need to understand their, because we are so disconnected from, what's this whole thing right now? Our world is totally overrun by terrorist attacks. Okay. You know what I mean? We have no idea. We have no idea what that perspective is like. I don't. You're right. Well, yeah, I've personally never been in that. No, exactly. And we need something globaliz- globalistically cataclysmic for us to come together. All this talk about fucking borders, about walls I don't being like built that. between Mexico and all this shit about walls, that shit needs to stop. And the it only does. way that will stop is we feel the pain of what other people are feeling. I, I agree with that. I do. Are we going to end it on that? Probably not. We can keep going for No, minute. no, let's end it on that. That feels like a good <laughs> ending. Are you we sure? have yeah, no, we have plenty to talk. Do you want to end it, John? I I have nothing I can think of saying at the moment. Okay, well, let's no, let's finish it. We'll come back next week. Oh, okay. Aww. I just like these so much. No, they're so good. <laughs> they are. Sorry about my buddy. It's like it's literally a time to focus and connect. Yes. When do you have a time to focus and connect with other people that you sit down and you focus on connecting with other people? It's a rare Not time. Not so often. Yeah, Not a lot so of people often. You were talking about that. earlier in the podcast, you're like, we do, this conversation usually doesn't come up. Yeah. Right? It doesn't usually come up. It's like, this is the time to sit down and connect with people's feelings and how they feel. And the thoughts that we always think about when we're alone but never share. Uh-huh. It's an interesting. I really appreciate it. It fucking fires me up. <laughs> oh baby, if it doesn't, then there's something wrong. What the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah, you need to. We're stopping. Chill out. What is that? It sounds like someone's fucking hitting a broom. <laughs> okay. Well, peace and love. Hippie. God bless everyone. God bless my mother. God bless Evan's mother. Yeah. No. God bless. Her. God Say bless. God, Sean, God. You better, Bless your mom. God, God bless, bless Jennifer Stoltman. Because she's going to be listening to this whole thing. Jennifer Stoltman is what you said? Yeah. God, God bless, bless Jennifer you. God Stoltman. Bless. God, bless. God bless John's friends. You God, know what I'm saying? God Give bless. Give him some education. God bless John. God bless John. For having an open mind to understand his God friends. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Oh, we didn't make fun of him this time, so it's good. No, we did. <laughs> he he just, did. He just handled it better. True. I love you so much, John. You have no John, idea. John, I love you to the moon and back. Well, thank you. It's on tape. Yeah. I can't take these words away. Yeah, I love you, John. They're, they're well, there you forever. can if you delete the file. But I won't. 
What are you what saying? What kind of person do you What are you saying, John? <laughs> what are you saying? It's a fucking can opener.